Laying the foundations for an APRS eye gate by Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730. You catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Now it's an amateur radio subject for this one. Uh, I'm hoping to build an APRS eye gate. So this is a radio I'm going to be using for that. This is a VV898 uh, by the Lake Saint Nation, or however you want to pronounce that. Don't ask me how. I'm not going to even attempt that one. And we have running the show this Raspberry Pi. And this is just a normal Raspberry Pi. It's nothing fancy. I'll take the lid off. And all you can see in there is just a normal Raspberry Pi. There's just nothing fancy about that. Clear that up a bit for you. Yeah, and it's got the header pins at the top, and that's how the radio will be switched into transmit. Now, obviously, I can't do that today, but what I can do, put the lid back on that, what I can do is build a circuit. So, to that end, I've ordered the parts I need from CPC, and but apart from a Vero board, because I've got that, and that's what I'll be building it on. Um, and that's using um, a, set, a circuit from a set of instructions on how to do this on the um, Direwolf GitHub page. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But at the moment, it's uh, taking audio from the from the radio, which is this cable. There's a capacitor in there to get rid of the, the bias voltage on the microphone socket of this little device here. That is a little USB. USB sound card. It's available on Amazon. I think it was about eight pound for that. And I've decided to put this into this case because you know this case looks good. Um, one of the things I can do is add a add a data carrier detect light. But whether that whether I'd want to do that or not remains to be seen. Although having said that, the light on the radio is just a receive light. Where you can't differentiate between data and other audio. So, just running off a USB charger at the moment. It's the one for my mobile phone, so my mobile phone doesn't have its normal charger right now. So, the power lead's got Anderson power pole connectors on it, so obviously I can't plug that in the wrong way. So that's that's well and good. So, so this does actually receive and it does work. So. I can demonstrate that now. So I've got my FT2D. So all I'll do is get it to manually transmit a beacon, like so. And that should have transmitted a beacon. And that will have gone into the APRSIS. And it will have gone through that radio. That radio doesn't actually have an antenna connected at the moment. I've left the antenna off, but I'll be putting one on later on in in the day today, just to see if it receives anything, because I'm not planning on going anywhere, and I might see if it can receive anything, if it can receive anything. Uh, but you just never know. So, I'll cover the transmitting side when I finally get that set up. That'll be done into a dummy load, because obviously right now I don't have the actual antenna I intend to use. I plan to build a ground plane antenna, very much the same as the one I've already got. Um, except I'm going to try and feed that with as low loss coax as I possibly can. Uh, which I might have to use an RG8 Mini for that, because I think that's probably the only thing that's going to fit through the shed's air bricks. I also need to get power down there as well, like a battery that I can put on maybe some solar panels or something to recharge. Because I want to have it down in the shed. And... Not sure how well this radio is going to handle the rigours of the temperatures of winter, but I'm sure it will do well. All I've got to do is put some shelves down there. In a previous video, you'll have seen which the inside of that shed and how it's all laid out. I um, uh, took very much care to make sure that I didn't reveal exactly where that shed was. Um, and I mentioned in that that there was a CRT television that I had to remove to test. That television is behind me with another Raspberry Pi plugged into it. And I'm pleased to say that that television actually does work and it didn't go bang. So it's, that's for a different project. So, And it's not an amateur radio related project. 
So, the reason why I want to put this eye gate on is because um, APRS coverage in this area doesn't seem to be that great, especially if you're on one of these, because that's only about 5 watts, or if you've got a foundation license, in which case you're, you're limited to about 10 watts, and some radios on their lowest setting put out 5 watts, and then the next setting would be 25 watts. So... Yeah, you can use APRS if you do have a foundation license. There's nothing in there saying you can't do that because it is in the 2 meter band. And you do have access to that part of the band. So, cheap radio. These are only about £80, these radios. I'd, I would have much preferred to have used an X-Taxi radio like a Motorola Roller 1 or a Tate 1 because those are readily available on, on eBay. But the problem I would have had would have been I'd then had to get all the programming software and everything to reprogram them to the APRS frequency. And there's quite a few of them out there. Some of them are for the 70 SEMS band, and just some of them are slightly out of out of band for two meters. Uh, so you've got to watch what you watch what you buy really when it comes to that. The Raspberry Pi I chose the 3B plus because. It's uh, less power hungry than the 4. The 4s are a wee bit more power hungry. 3B Plus is okay for for running off um, uh, a battery like that. Um, so it's running Direwolf. Instru instructions for setting that up are available on the Direwolf GitHub page. There's a link to that below in, in the description. I won't go into too much details on how to set this all up because, yeah. It'd just be repeating that pretty much parrot fashion. And remember with these, there's a bias voltage on the microphone output, so the best thing to do is try and get rid of that and just put a capacitor in. I think that's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in there. can't remember because I've now heat shrunk it up and I'm not removing the heat shrink to, to look because I don't have any more heat shrink of that size, which is a bit annoying. But that's all sealed up with a bit of heat shrink and tidied up, just make it look a bit tidier. Um, I'll put power pole connectors on the power lead for the radio. That's to make sure that it doesn't get plugged in backwards. So, all in all, very good. And quite a compact setup. Both parts are pretty much similar sort of size. Let's bring them in a bit. So you've got the Raspberry Pi there on top of the radio. There you go. That radio is 10 watts, and it is on the high power setting, so it will transmit at 10, 10 watts. It's on narrow FM, which it needs to be, otherwise it isn't going to work very well. So it's, it has to be on narrow deviation for this. So if you are going to set it up, you're going to use one of these, make sure it's programmed for narrow deviation. In fact, that's the same with pretty much any radio you want to use for APRS. And it's quite easy to do. You just need a Raspberry Pi, an old spare transceiver you're not using. I wasn't using this. I do have the microphone for this, but I don't plan to use that either. So, and for test purposes, another radio that can transmit on APRS, which this one can. If you don't have a radio that, well, if you don't have a radio that can transmit on APRS, then it might be a bit harder to test it, but I've been able to test it because I do actually have that because I have the ASU FG2D. So, so if you want to put an APRS I gate on, it's not that difficult to do. The only thing, if you want to run it all the time and leave it unattended for, for other amateurs to be able to use, you will need, in the UK, you will need to apply for a notice of variation in NOV. You do that through the UK repeater.net website. There's a form on there for it. And if you were um, uh, if you if you want to do it then but but do it only um uh, part time then you can just use your own call sign and just switch it off at the end of the day when you when you're not using it or you go out the house but i want to run this 24/7 to fill in a gap that we otherwise shouldn't have um a gap that was left by the loss of um uh, mb7 usd when that when that was closed down so this should fill in that gap hopefully to an all right degree, so I'm looking forward to getting this on the air. So 
It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November, Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango, 7P0. If you catch me on 11 metres or PMR 446, or if you if you are on the CB, just call me the Red Squirrel if you like. That's absolutely fine. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can uh, send a message over the damp net to, to my little pager if you want. Just need my call sign if, if you want to do that. Um, you can catch me also on the Hubnet and Network Radios. Um, I haven't used Network Radios in a while. I have been a wee bit busy with work, so because obviously I've started a new job in the last couple of weeks, and obviously that's been taking my time. So, and and that's more or less it. So I'll show the transmit side of this once I've got the circuit built. That might not be for a couple of days because I'm obviously waiting for the components to arrive from CPC. So once they arrive, we can go from there. So, seven threes for now, guys. Keep yourselves safe. Obviously, we've still got to deal with the with, with the whole coronavirus situation, which is a bit of a shame. But you know, what can we do? So, it's so that radio is the Lixin Lation VV eight nine eight. I really don't know how you pronounce the brand. So, and that's just a normal Raspberry Pi three B plus. And that's running off the Wi-Fi. One other thing, I'm not sure what the Wi-Fi is going to be like down in my shed for, for, for that device, so I might have to invest in a, in a mobile data plan to run the thing. So I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, and obviously that'll be in a later video. So, so and uh, is it's a Wednesday today? Uh, yes, it's a Wednesday. So I'm filming this at half four, three hours after filming this. There is a net on the GB3IR repeater for for the Colburn and Richmondshire District Amateur Radio Society, or there usually is, and uh, I usually take part in that. So you don't necessarily need to be a member of the club to, to take part in that because we'll we'll well welcome anyone. So and there's the there's the repeater itself. Let's turn that down a bit. Just reminding me what time it was. <laughs> right, seven threes for now, guys, and uh, catch you on the air very soon. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. Seventy threes from Paul, Mike, Zero Whiskey, November Uniform, or two six Charlie Tango seven three zero on eleven meters and PMR four four six.